Hey guys, welcome back to the next video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. This is Richard for Welsh Tech, and today we have the first player cryo air cooler. Can this compete with the likes of Thermal Right or Be Quiet? Let's find out, shall we? Okay, so this is the first player. Uh, this is ready for 9000 series Anchor Ultra. This is the Cryo CPU air cooler from first player. So let's open it up and see what comes in the box. Okay, so greeted with some foam. Yes, we go. Right, so this will be the installation guide. This will tell you how to install it with AMD as well as Intel. But I'm going to go through that process anyway. Ooh, I do like the look of it, actually. It's quite nice. Now, let's have a look what comes in the box by here. Now, comes with all your Intel and AMD brackets. Looks very similar to what Thermorite does. Does it have thermal paste? It doesn't look like. Not that I can see, anyway. Oh, well, that's a, that's a bit of a shame. Yeah. Not that I can see. Ah, oh, looks like it's proprietary cables, but oh well. Right, so let's get the, the tower out. Ah, oh, it's got pre-applied. Ah, oh, there we go. So this is a big cooler. And let me get out the box. Okay, so this is the cooler. And yeah, I mean, it's quite a beefy air cooler. It's got uh, six heat pipes. It's got the base plate, but there with the pre uh, with the pre-applied thermal paste it's a very similar air cooler to what Thermorite has and then when we get to the fans they are a proprietary connector but they do go to ARGB and 4 pin PWM so it's not so bad they look quite nice I will say they look alright I do like the uh, the nice shroud so when it comes to like the specs now the CPU it supports is Intel uh, 1851, 1700, 1200, and 1150X. AM5, AM4, the color, this one's black. The CPU cooler height is 160 millimeters tall. The uh, heat sink material is aluminium. It's got six heat pipes. The TDP on this one, they're saying 275 watts. The fan quantity is two. The fans are standard uh, 120 fans. They're 120 by 120 by 25. Uh, when it comes to the... Uh, Fan speeds, the fan speeds range between 750 and 1900 RPM. The CFM isn't the highest I've ever seen, but it's not the lowest either at 57.56 CFM. The air pressure is 2.48 millimeter H2O with a 38.21 decibel. Wow. Ooh. It's a three pin PWM and a three, oh no, four pin PWM and it's a three pin AGB. It's got a hydraulic bearing on the fans with a 12 volt and the fan amp bridge is a 0 0.17 amp with a fan rated power at uh, 2.04 watts. And as for the amount of hours, it does rate this for 30,000 hours. So let's get this cooler on the test bench and see if it can handle my 7900 okay so when it comes to the insulation first of all this is for amd specifically so what you want is the standoffs we want to do is place them here 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 and there like that okay so that's done now i'm gonna grab the bracket place that like this here like that then you get four screws that you want to place right here 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 and here and then you just mount them down with the bracket installed now the cooler does come with thermal paste so all I'm going to really show you is how to install the actual uh, cooler itself okay so this is how it's going to actually come like this with the wires so what you want to do is move out the wires now it's only going to go one way so you want to place it directly on one thread like that then on the top of the other thread now the obviously i'm going to worry about uh tightening it back and forth 
as long as you catch the thread which you will know because it will start to tighten down and then all you do is you tighten it down and then we'll be back now as for the fans these do come with these proprietary uh, like 12 pin connectors but they do come off a cable which does go to standard rgb and pwm so what you really want to do is take these clips which are annoying to install yes but they do help so what you want to do is this place it down like that or oh, actually no same process just take this first and go like that now the cable is easy to install then you take the brackets or the clips one side one side that side that side and then directly down and in the middle that's all you want to do right, okay. and then all you do is line it up clip that one in now same process with this side so put the fan in first in the connector like this so just line it up plug it in done and then what you want to do is exactly the same process with the clips on each side now this is the problem with the clips which all cpu coolers for some reason still use absolutely annoying except for arctic of course they've gone with a um this like this the system where it's got like a bolt or a nut on the end and it just fastens into a housing but right so that's that done now cable in as you can see look it does come with two cables comes with a daisy chain for the pwm which is four pin and then it does come with a daisy chain for the argb that is to connect up other fans or uh power sources so what we'll do is i'll show you a header now for argb this is the Cryo First Player CPU Cooler. This is the fan to 50%. Basically silent at 50%. Same thing, but 100% fan speed. There's a bit of a hum, but they aren't the loudest. Okay, so when it comes to the overall test system, it is my AM5 platform. It's a Ryzen 9 7900 with 32 gigs of DDR5. It's got an MSI B650 motherboard. It is with a RX 7800 XT Nitro Plus. It also has a 1000 watt cooling power supply and it is housed in the Shadowbase 800 FX with four 140 Lightwing fans. Now, as for the room temperature before testing, it was 15 Celsius and after testing, did go up to 18 Celsius. As for testing, now, CPU power draw high for 50% fan speed was 170 watts. The low was 152 and the CPU clocks are high at 5.4 with a low at 5 gigahertz. Now, as for Cinebench R23, the idles were 33 with a max of 89 Celsius. Blender Pavilion, idles 33 with a max of 89. Blender Classroom, idles 33 with a max of 89 again. And 3D Mark CPU test, the idles were 39, uh, 33 with a max of 76 Celsius. For 100% fan speed, the power draw high was 164 with a low at 153 watts. The CPU clocks was 5.4 at high and 5.1 at low. Now, as for the uh, Cinebench R23 run, the idles were 34 with a max of 87. The Blender Pavilion was 
34 at idle with a max of 85. But in the classroom, idles 34 with a max of 85. And 3D Mark Super Test idles 34 with a max of 70 Celsius. Now, what I'm going to do over here is actually put up a graph. It's going to show you or compare this to other air coolers I've previously reviewed. One from Thermalright. I will put some of the ones from Deep Cool. The ones from Be Quiet as well. I'm going to put a couple of them. It doesn't matter which ones they are. As long as it's a air cooler, a, a, dual a dual tower air cooler like even the digital ones from uh, Thermorite that I've already reviewed, the dual tower one. So make sure you look into the watch because this is where the graph's going to show. Okay then, so what did you think of that? Now, first play, I've never actually heard of this brand. So when they reached out for me to do reviews, I have got an, a case here as well to review. Now, from what I've looked online, this cooler does range between 30 and 35 pound which considering that it is a very basic dual tower it does look very similar to what thermoid does but it performed okay it looks fantastic as well i do like the rgb illumination especially on the top of the uh cooler itself it does look very very nice but of course there's going to be some downsides i'm not a big fan of the proprietary cables the overall cable management of course not a big fan of that either it just looks like a mess once you've uh, unraveled it all but other than that to be honest for the price it performed well it looks fantastic and quite honestly i like it it looks really really nice especially in your system now obviously the downside like i've already said the cable management and the proprietary cables now yes they do go to standard pwm and argb but it's the cable mess that's mainly the issue for me whether whether they do a revision of this perhaps they can go with a standard argb route but this time not doing it this way because the cables are rather messy but that's just a nitpick and that's just my personal opinion but if i can find one for sale especially in the uk or europe i will try and find links down below if you are looking for a cheap budget air cooler now this is very budget so yeah look and i say big thank you to first player i have got a case like i mentioned and that will be coming shortly and for this it does get a recommendation because i think for the price it does perform and looks fantastic so yeah look i've got tons of stuff coming i've got stuff uh, tons of stuff here i've got the one division from uh thermal right here i've got the peerless assassin 140 so make sure you subscribe and as always this is richard for welsh tech i hope you guys have a fantastic week and weekend ahead of you good bye